So Brady, I don't know if you remember, but uh, just before Christmas, you, uh, you told me to look at apocalyptic numbers. It resulted in me spending a whole day earlier in this week just thinking about the apocalypse. And my, my, my daughter came over, she said, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just, just thinking about the end of the world. And she's like, okay, that's normal. And then sort of walked off. But, so this is your fault. So, okay, so this, this all stems from um, a guy called uh, Cliff Pickover, who's a, very much a popularizer of, of mathematics. He seems to have a little bit of an obsession in some of his things with the number 666, which, you know, many of us will know. I, I mean, I grew up a Catholic, um, and 666 is the number of the beast. It's there in the Book of Revelations, um, and it sort of marks the, you know, the coming of the Antichrist and the end of the world. One way to write Nero Caesar in Hebrew, 666. Six. Some people say it's actually a misinterpretation. It should be 616. I know. And actually, well, we potentially we could change some of these numbers I'm going to talk about for 616. I'm already a step ahead of you on that one, Brady. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, yeah. So, so, so and for those that don't know about, I mean, there's, there's a number of our video on this, of course, right? There's the film The Omen as well, where, you know, he shaves Damien's head and he sees 666. So you don't have to be a Catholic or more generally a Christian to know about this. The 666 is this number that's associated with, in some sense, the end of the world, the apocalypse. Cliff Pickover seems to like it. And in particular, he likes to think about numbers that have got some relation to 666 or you know, it's the 666 in them. And one of these is the apocalyptic powers. So what are these? Well, an apocalyptic power is a number of the form two to the n, okay, where n is some positive integer. And it will contain, somewhere in this number, it will contain the digits Six, six, six. So you can imagine writing out this number in full, you work out its decimal expansion, and then somewhere in that expansion is going to be six, six, six. So six, six, six isn't in the N, it's in the... The whole thing, the, the whole thing. These are called apocalyptic powers. First one that you get, two to the one, five, seven. Yeah, so it's a big number. It's not crazy big, but anyway, it's a big number. And you can see just there, just in the middle of it, there's the six, 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 okay? And that makes this an apocalyptic power. An apocalyptic power, or maybe an apocalyptic number. I've also seen it referred to as that. But yeah, let's call them apocalyptic powers. So that's the first one. The next one is two to the 192. And then you can carry on finding these. You know, you write your computer program, it starts finding them. Two to the 218, the next one. Okay, now you can carry on trying to look for these guys, right? And there are loads, actually. There, are, there really are loads. Here's a cool one. Two to the 666. That's an apocalyptic power, which is really good. That one feels significant, right? Yeah. Another significant one, I think, is these two, actually. Two to the two, two, one, zero, oh, and two to the two, two, one, two. Now, why are these sort of significant? They're, they're, they're kind of next to each other in some sense. They're both their apocalyptic powers, so they contain the digits 666. They're also apocalypse numbers. So what's an apocalypse number? An apocalypse number is a number which has 666 digits. Ah. So these two bad boys, they're not only apocalyptic in that they contain 666, there are actually 666 digits in these numbers, in both these two. Okay, so they feel significant as well. Surely there are an infinite number of apocalyptic powers. Okay, can we come back to that? Okay. It's a very good question. Okay, okay. I think the answer is pretty much certainly yes but there's actually a bit of significant math there that we can talk about later but i want to come back to that in a bit another significant one you might uh, talk about is the 666th of these guys two to the two four five four that's the 666th apocalyptic power and you could go on right there are loads I'm, I'm, and i think probably an infinite number okay so we've got all these numbers but what are we going to do with them well this is supposed to be about the apocalypse right Okay, so was, am I supposed to infer something about the, the apocalypse from this, about the, the timing of the apocalypse or something like that? I don't know, right? So maybe these are somehow times. I should think of these as, as some multiple of time. So is this two to the one, five, seven seconds? Well, I don't like using seconds because seconds are a bit man-made and this is supposed to be the apocalypse. Like that should be independent of whether it's, you know, humans are involved or, or not, right? So, so maybe we should use, um, years. Again, I don't like that because years are a bit earthly. I, I want to think of this on cosmic scale, right? So, you know, 
other years are available on other planets, right? So, so, so let's, let, let's not do years. Let's do something fundamental, something that's universal across the universe. And I think the obvious thing to use is a Planck time, which is the, the shortest time you can think of. If you try to consider smaller times, you would break the fabric of space and time. Literally, time, space and time would be overwhelmed by quantum effects, by quantum gravity. So the smallest time you can think about really is a Planck time which is about 5.39 times 10 to the minus 44 seconds. So it's a very short time. Shorter times do not exist without breaking space time. So this feels fundamental. This feels like universally something important in nature. So we can ask, what is two to the 157 Planck times? How long is that? And could that be a, the time of the apocalypse, right? Okay, now two to the 157 Planck times is not a very big time. It's about, if I change the units, it's about 9,846 seconds. Right. That's that one. If I do that in Planck time, that many Planck times is 9,846 seconds. How long is that? That's it's like... a few hours. Right. Okay, so, I mean, what are we doing? Are we measuring time since the Big Bang? The Big Bang, you know, the apocalypse did not happen a few hours after the Big Bang. It just didn't. So forget this one. Okay. This one's not interesting. Okay, so let's go to the next one, maybe. This one is about 10 million years. That's a bit okay. of a jump between them. It's a the... bit of a jump, yeah. But it's, you know, it's a lot of, there's a lot of extra powers here. Yeah. <laughs> Did the universe at the end after 10, 10, 10 million years after the Big Bang? No. It's about 13.8 billion years old, so forget this one. Okay. Okay, let's do the next one. 2 to the 218 Planck times is about 7 times 10 to the 14 years. Now, this one got me kind of curious, actually, right? And I'll tell you why. Because between about 10 to the 14 years and 10 to the 15 years, stuff does sort of happen. Okay, so around 10 to the 14 years, normal star formation will stop in our universe. Now, why? Why is that? It's because basically, you know, the amount of free hydrogen that you have floating around the universe, there's just not enough of it at that point. The normal, the normal star formation will, will use that, but by about 10 to the 14 years, there just won't be enough of it around, and so normal star formation will end. The only way you can create new stars might be by smashing together some brown dwarfs or something like that. There's just not gonna be many new stars created. It's, it's gonna become quite a dark universe at this point. At around 10 to the 15 years is the point at which planets will start, will have all have been kicked out of their star system. So you get stellar collisions happen, right? You know, you know, two star systems collide. When that happens, you tend to kick the planets out of, the, out of that system. And by about 10 to the 15 years, all planets pretty much will have been kicked out of their star systems. Just roaming on their own. Just, so so that, that isn't a good, good place for life. So this might be the time that the last creature dies. <laughs> Two to the 218 Planck times. Yeah, after the Big Bang. Who knows? It could be. Or maybe this has just got nothing to do with any of this. That, that's also possible. <laughs> that's also possible. Because why would it be the third one that is significant? Well, so. it's the Holy Trinity, maybe. You never know. <laughs> you, can, you can always do anything with this. So what about this guy? What, what would have that given us? Two to the 2210 Planck times. Well, that's actually a huge time scale. That's about three times 10 to the 614 years. Wow. Huge time. You know, at some point we're gonna enter a phase where everything is just collapsed into black holes. And then after about a Google years, all those black holes are, will have decayed. And we just enter, we just have a universe which is just filled with, with radiation that was emitted by black holes. It's, and that's after about a Google years, right? And this is way bigger than a Google years. There's even at around 10 to the 161 years, you know, the, the, there's a likelihood that the universe is gonna, its, its vacuum will collapse, right? Because of the Higgs, the Higgs becomes unstable and the vacuum of the universe collapses. So there's so many bad things that are gonna happen before you get to this point that this, this just seems too big. Okay. Too big. All right. Okay. Do you like thinking about what the universe would be like when it's like this? Like what it would look like or sound like or smell like? Or... I love it. I love it. I love thinking about the far future of the universe and this, I mean, these timescales are just, I mean, this is just unimaginable, right? Because, you know, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. And actually, when you think about these crazy timescales that are possible, that you can even conceive of, to think that the universe is only 13.8 billion years old, it's nothing. The universe is a baby.
so, right, so that's a bit of crazy pseudo-physics stroke, <laughs> so whatever you want to call it. Um, there is a little bit of maths in these, though, that's, that I think is quite interesting. Uh, and there's a puzzle, there's something, there's a conjecture which is, which is not known if to be true or not, but, but may be true. Now, at some point, you get to this number. 2 to the 2, 9, 7, 8, 4. Okay, now this number is not apocalyptic. That's amazing to me, because it must have a lot of digits. So, so th this, yeah, it does have a lot of digits, but 666 is not in there. So this is not apocalyptic. But this is the last known non-apocalyptic power of two. Every single one above it, as far as we know, well, we, don't, we, haven't, we haven't checked them all, obviously, but, you know, you, you can run computer programs, try to check a lot of them. They're all apocalyptic. So the next one, the one with the five at the end, apocalyptic. The next one, apocalyptic. So all of this seems, there's this conjecture that all of the ones beyond this are indeed apocalyptic, but it's not proven. There's a bit of a puzzle out there. You know, is, is this the last non-apocalyptic power of two? I don't know. It does seem to be likely that at some point that um, there the, the will, the, the, you know, the, the uh, you will just have, a, it's going to be apocalyptic forever, right? But because there's so many digits. Because there's so many digits, it does seem likely. But there's no proof of this, and there's no proof of the fact that this is the, this is the last one. Imagine if it is, like that could be like a really holy number. Yeah, yeah, it's the last, last, last moment of purity in the universe. Yeah, with this time scale, I, don't even, I mean, don't even go there. This is going to be huge, right? If we start trying to convert it, but yeah. So, well, that would be a, that would be a perfect time for the like, the return of the savior. <laughs> Yeah, do you want me to check what it is? In, in a, <laughs> it's going to be something crazy. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's do it. Wow. Okay, that's... <laughs> right, this, okay, we want this in Planck times, hmm. is about 1.3 times 10 to the 8, 9, 1, 5 years. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of years. That is a lot of years. It's a long way. That yeah. is a long way. I, I don't think there's... I think this is way beyond anything significant. But well, there's the Poincaré recurrences and all that sort of stuff, but, but they come much later. But this is this is uh, this is way beyond like you know sort of the, the the sort of heat death of the universe, if you like. This is this is very far future. Six hundred and sixty-six is a very arbitrary number. Is there any point to doing this besides, <laughs> besides fun? Like, does doing this you know create mathematical thinking and new methods, or is this purely like? Just like a game. I mean, at some level, it's a game, but it, but it's it's also you could obviously generalize these questions, right? You could you know, you're right. You don't have to think about six six six. You can say, what about you know what what it, it's like these statements like at some point am I definitely going to get? You, you could say, what powers of some prime number doesn't have to be two, right? You could say some, what what powers of some prime number, and and you could consider obviously different number combinations, um, and and ask. Do they appear in them? There is sort of number beyond which they're always going to be there. These are mathematical questions you could ask, and there could be structure in there. Whether that structure has application elsewhere, I have no idea. But who cares, right? This is maths, right? We, we, we do maths to try to un unpick the sort of the, the fabric of, of the number systems and try to understand them. And then invariably nature comes along and says, oh, yeah, this has got something to do with me, by the way. And really? Uh, and it, so, so I never worry about whether it's going to have some application at some point. It's just fun to do. And yes, you could absolutely start generalizing these questions to different types of numbers, and, but with the same sort of underlying principles. Coming back to the puzzle you set us, where you said, is this the last number mm -hmm. where there's uh, no 666 in the expansion? Surely in an infinite universe where n, where our power goes to infinity, can be any number, will there not be a number where they're all fours? Or where the, where the expansion is all fours, or like, will, will it, like, like how pi possibly has every, you know, combination. Like, is not everything possible? Is it not possible that eventually there'll be a two to the something that not, not only will give us no 666, it'll give us no sixes at all? So I think, I think this depends on, on the underlying sort of seed, the underlying. So, so for example, let's suppose I changed it and I consider the powers of 10. None of them are going to have 666 in them. It's easy, very easy. I can, I can throw it. So, so, so it depends on, on, on how you pose it. So it's not always as simple as, you know, if you go big enough, then everything can happen. Right. It depends how you do it. And so using it, two as our seed, it seems like that doesn't have a nature whereby we'll get a, 
a freak aberration where they're all fours. Or... Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Well, it seems to be it seems to be allowing that at some stage you, you you are going to get these, but these six six sixes. But maybe it's you know there's something related to the fact of six 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 and how this relates to two in some way that that controls this. And and there is, I don't think it's a branch of mathematics that's been as explored as far as I'm aware. But but it, it would be interesting to do it. I think. Well, this is uh, what I'm saying. Uh, this uh, could yeah. lead to new mathematics. Absolutely, I think so. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So actually, since you're talking about different numbers that you could look for. This brings me on to Goliath. This conversation continues and there's plenty more to come. See links in the usual places for Tony talking about the so-called Goliath numbers and some other whoppers. Plus we'll go back to the apocalypse numbers and delve into the world of 666 digit long primes and Fibonacci numbers. Tony's written a really great book about really big numbers and their intersections with physics. I'll also link to that in the description. And here, on the screen at the moment, well, these are some of our Patreon supporters. I normally list only a limited number of them, but today you're seeing 666 of them because, well, you should know why by now.